Back here on a Thursday morning, talking about the NBA playoffs. You guys see what happened in game two last night. Russell Westbrook walking down the tunnel after the game at Wells Fargo Center when a fan poured a bucket of popcorn on him. Russ already upset after injuring his right ankle. Well, this set him off. Here he was after the loss about that moment. To be blatantly honest, man, it's just getting out of hand, uh, especially for me. Um, just the amount of disrespect, the amount of just fans just doing whatever they want to do. It's just it's out of pocket, man. It's out of pocket, seriously. Like, in the other setting, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for the fans enjoying the game and having fun and, you know, it's part of sports. I get it. Uh, but there's certain things that cross the line. Uh, and any other setting, I know for a fact that fans and they wouldn't come up. A guy wouldn't come on the street and pour popcorn on my head because he know what happened. A guy wouldn't come up to me and talk mess about my kids and my family on the street because the response would be different. In these arenas, you got to start protecting the players, man. It, you know, we'll see what the NBA does, but the, you know, there, there's a huge consequence for us as players and. Especially for me, I've been in a lot of accidents where fans and they say whatever, um, and the consequences for me are a lot more detrimental uh, than to, to those people in the, in the stands because they feel like they, they're untouchable. Um, they can say what they want. They're, they're at a sporting event where they should enjoy the game. Um, but a lot of times, fans don't realize this is our job. This is my job. This is not uh, some play. This is what I, something I love to do. This is something I love competing at. So to get food thrown on top of me, um, it's just um, and if I you know, unfortunately, you know, I couldn't get to the stands, but I just don't, I just don't take that lightly, man. So LeBron was watching, chimed in with this. By the way, we as the players want to see who threw that popcorn on Russ while he was leaving the game tonight with an injury. There's cameras all over the arena, so there's no excuse as if the shoe was on the other foot. A Wells Fargo Center issued a stern warning to fans for any conduct like this moving forward. Brandon, I'll start with you. What do you make of everything that happened here after the game last night? Yeah, I, I'm with LeBron on this. Uh, enough's enough. Like, this is ridiculous, and this this is what, the second, third time this happened to Russ, Russell Westbrook? This is unbelievable. We need the NFL, the NBA, the WNBA, the NHL to do something, and we don't want a statement. This is ridiculous. If this happened on the street like Russ said, it would be a different outcome. And you keep putting these players in a box, telling these players, oh, sit over here. You get paid a lot of money. These fans are paying a hefty amount for a ticket to come watch you uh, uh, play basketball, to watch you kick a ball, to shoot a ball, whatever. And, and you need to sit here and take it. No, protect your players. There's, it's not only just throwing things on people, which is assault. You know, you go back to college football, you got guys throwing beer bottles at players. Enough's enough. Treat them like you would treat them in the street. If you're walking down the street, Okay, and, and you hear two people yelling and screaming at each other. Someone's going to stop. You know how many times I've been sitting on the sideline hearing a, a, a fan sitting right there on the 40 or the 50 just screaming and cursing, talking about players, uh, mothers, uh, wives, children. It's unbelievable. I had a fan sit behind, you know, our bench one time playing in Baltimore. And I love Baltimore. You guys are actually good people. There's this one guy uh, in particular. He's sitting behind the bench. He had a list of a player's family's names and he just went one by one just dog cursing them and the security guard just sat there the police officers on duty just sat there they didn't do anything the team officials didn't do anything it's time for the leagues to stand up and do something about this because we're going to have another incident what we're going to have what was it called the the melee what was it called the Nick? The when you had uh, the Meta World the Peace? Palace. yeah malice right. right. so like, here's ridiculous. the thing about that brandon all right can't, I just my job's to be honest. I'm just going to be honest. It, it, fans have lost any fear of a malice at the palace, and so they've gotten out of hand. The, the reason this happens is because fans have convinced themselves they are in an impenetrable bubble, and I can pour popcorn on Russell Westbrook's head, and he is literally going to be held back by five people. Now, it would have been bad for Russ. 
and it would have been bad in theory for the NBA had Russ gone up there and punched that guy in the face. But it actually would have kind of solved the problem. Because the only reason people do this, they, they think they are tapping the glass at the zoo. And these are caged animals who can't hurt you. First of all, it is obviously disrespectful. It's hugely problematic to treat athletes like they're animals. But one of the reasons people tap the glass is because it's so thick, you know, the lion can't break through. If once a year it's like, oh man, lion broke through that glass again, people wouldn't tap it anymore. And so it is, here's the thing, Brandon, you are allowed to do so much at a sporting event that you can't do on the street. You are literally allowed That's to right. chant, bleep Trey Young, or as they did last night, Trey Young is balding. You are allowed so much of a wide berth to act a fool as a fan because it is part of sports. There's really two things you can't do. Touch the players or throw something at the players or say something about a player's family member or something that is, you know, racist or in of that ilk. Everything else is allowed. And so, of course, the guy should be banned. Of course, the guy, if he has season tickets, should have him revoked. All of that's true. But what's also true is what Russ said, which is this happens because the fans, and I know it seems like a weird take, are a little too protected. Wilds, I sent you a video the other day from just 25 years ago of Vernon Maxwell. I think something was either said to him or thrown at him. He walked up in the stands, hit the guy, walked back down to the huddle, and the game moved on. It's a different time, it was a different era. But <laughs> back the, just you know, 20 some years ago, there was a real fear that if I go out of line, I am going to be met with the same response I would be met with if I go out of line on the street. And that's been removed, I understand why that's been removed, but if the NBA stance is going to be under no circumstances whatsoever can you ever go into the stands, then the NBA needs to do a better job of ensuring there are fewer instances where a player would have a reason to go into the stands. Yeah, so I think that the NBA is going to take this incident very, very seriously. I think that Adam Silver uh, is the knows the sort of um, the malice in the palace. Let's say is not in the in too far in the rear window of the league like it is in fans' memories. It hasn't taken on any sort of like comical quality. It's not. It's not funny. It's there's nothing about it. It is considered a stain on the league. Adam Silver also is known for, in his tenure as commissioner, Brandon, he has done an excellent job um, working with players. And when players talk, Adam Silver listens. So when Russ has spoken out multiple times about this, he spoke out after an incident in Utah, he spoke out after um, another incident in Philadelphia where a fan gave him the middle finger, and LeBron has now spoken out. And this is, we can also see LeBron's power. And I do not think that the response to, the, to this is going to be, you know, bad actor whack-a-mole. You know, oh, take his tickets, take his tickets, take his tickets. I think the league is going to launch a study on, on antisocial behavior, maybe in association with the um, Players Association. And they're going to come up with some changes here. Because this has happened to Russ multiple times. So you can't just say, you know what? Oh, we got rid of this guy. Let's move on to the next game because you have to. There has to be behavioral changes in the league, and not just continue to point the finger at one bad actor. There's going to be severe changes in the league so that to make sure that this stuff is totally deadened. Right. Yeah, man. And my blood is over here boiling watching that and then having this conversation. Absolutely, we need to have this conversation and we need to see policies change. I wanna see what the policy is right now. What is the policy? You know, you see fans fighting and they continue uh, to watch the game after the fight. Like it's ridiculous uh, what we allow in our stands. We, we not only have to look at that type of behavior, but we also during this time need to look at how we approach 
players, period. All right, like we force fan, we force our players after moments like this to sit and have their press conferences when they're when so much is going on, uh, 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 emotions are and, and, and tension is flaring and, and, and emotions are out of control. So we need to look at that uh, that visual that Nick rolled out as far as you know animals in a cage, animals at a zoo, and that thick glass and, and being able to knock on it because you know nothing's going to happen. We need to look at all of this and break it down, and we need to put policies in place and rethink the way we approach the player yeah. because the players are not animals. Well, a hundred percent, and and I hope people understood the analogy I, I, I was using there because it, I think it's abhorrent that in many in many cases players are treated as such. I also think that some of this is actually gray. And by that I mean, I do think part of, like Derek Rose said in his press conference day before yesterday or yesterday, part of sports is a loud, rowdy, obnoxious, at times profane crowd. So like when Russ got upset about the middle fingers in Philadelphia, that to me, that's over the line, but I, it is, that is more part and parcel with being a pro athlete. There is going to be some level of disrespect from the opposing team's crowd because they're jealous and they really wanted to be a pro athlete themselves. But there are certain things that are so cut and dry, this obviously being one of them, that to Wild's point, that you should be able to weed it out. And I don't think it's just on the league level. I think it's on the individual teams. You can recognize when things are bubbling. You can recognize also, if you wanted to go deeper, into how much alcohol and over-serving alcohol at these events has to do with that. I don't think a lot of sober people necessarily engage in some of the